when the, word, the, the orphanage was somewhere outside, about 60 kilometers outside of Paris in Chaumont. And when the uh, uh, word reached that uh, the Germans came, there was this, this thing in, in, in wartime that uh, the, the airplanes come over, overhead and then the artillery comes and then the, the human beings come. Uh -huh. So there was some warning as to what was going to happen and the uh, International Red Cross sent a man where these children were living, there were about 70 of us, and all of the children were Jewish children from uh, 10 to maybe 16. I was one of the younger ones. And we all left Chaumont, and uh, as everyone else does at, in uh, wartime or times of uh, tragedy and uh, dilemma or earthquakes or floods, that everybody just moves in one direction. That all, of, all of mankind that, that can move just moves, and uh, all of France fled south toward uh, Lyon, then Marseille, and then uh, sometimes by cart and sometimes by bus and sometimes by foot. However, you can move from one place to another. It's like hitchhiking. Uh, we ended up in uh, from Lyon and uh, Lyon to Marseille. Uh, in Marseille, uh, we were through this man. We were told that uh, if you can somehow reach the ocean, that they can get us off the continent. And I, I was not that familiar at that time. This is only things I picked up, but I do remember. We reached, uh, we went to Toulouse over the Pyrenees to Barcelona, from Barcelona to Madrid. We stayed in a convent in Madrid for a couple of weeks. We went to, by train to Barcelona. In Barcelona, we were put on a Portuguese liner. Uh. We went from uh, Lisbon by boat to uh, Casablanca, to Cas from Casablanca to Dakar, which took a few weeks here and there. Crossed the Atlantic uh, to Bermuda. Um, from Bermuda to Cuba, from Cuba to New York City, and um, 11 of the 70 reached New York City. What happened to the others? So, ill or weak, tired, or met perhaps met a family somewhere, or some people who were, they, they decided to stay there. They were no family, so you were pretty much your own uh, parents, hmm. except for this man. And, uh, but we went somewhere and all of a sudden someone was gone and we went, we moved on again and somebody else was gone or uh, decided it was better for them there. Uh, and when you're 12, 13, uh, I guess your survival instincts are a little different than when you're older. And I just kept on going. Do you think, that's interesting, do you think that that's true? That when you're 12 or 13, your survival instincts, instincts are stronger than they are now? Not stronger, not different. stronger, but uh, they're different. Uh, if, if you're walking and... Uh, Somebody offers you a meal or a hot bath or uh, uh, you don't think about God, uh, I, sh I shouldn't be staying on, uh, I should be staying on to the final point. Well, where is, somebody says, well, tomorrow you're going to Dakar, or tomorrow you're going on a boat to Bermuda. Well, that's, that's an unheard of place. And somebody says, well, would you like to stay in my home outside of Barcelona or outside of Lyon or to, in Toulouse? And uh, some of these children were French and some of them were German. I, I think they, should, they must have been aware that the further they went, the further they were going to from wherever they eventually want to get back to. I don't really know. Uh, do you have any memory of wanting to stop along the way, or did you want to get to New York City? Do you have memories of the time? No. I've, I've, that's, that's the, uh, my time in France at when I was um, 9 and 10. In actuality, that's the beginning of my life, other than what my, my sisters have told me. I've, prior to my getting together back, back with my sisters some years ago, while I was growing up, there was no, there was no uh, awareness of my childhood. Hmm. There never has been one. I've never tried to look into it. Hmm. Other than sitting down with my sisters, I have four left. Uh, they've given me bits and pieces of what I did and what I was like when I was a kid. My sister here told me that when I was six and seven years old, I took violin lessons. On my, on my word of honor, I've never taken a violin lesson. <laughs> Uh, but I do remember uh, France, I remember the trenches that we dug out and when the, uh, the German planes came overhead, which was almost a, a, a semi-weekly occurrence, we went into these trenches and the, what I was fascinated by were the, were the frogs. Hmm. There were these huge <laughs> toads that were always there in these tunnels that we went into underground to, when we left the chateau hmm. that we were living in. And I remember very well the uh, 
the march more from the from fr the middle of France to the south of France than anything else because of the there were these uh, in one particular place outside of Lyon the uh, there were these parachutists that came out of the sky in civilian clothes these fanatics throwing hand grenades and the Germans re the French resistance caught them uh, and in one this particular instance put them against the wall and just riddled them with bullets. Do you remember seeing that as yes. a kid? Huh. Yes. So. I guess I, sh I should remember that. I would remember that, and I have. Yeah. But it was the, fir the first year in, in France was very good for me. Uh, I liked the people that I met. I learned to speak French. I went to school there. I lived in the country. I remember I didn't have to wear shoes. I liked that. Uh, From two, uh, let's, we should do this in, in sections, I suppose. 